beautiful people you are welcome to my channel i say a very big welcome to all my subscribers and if you're new to this channel i also say a very big welcome to you do well to hit on that subscribe button and also turn on the notification bell so that you will not miss any of my videos i upload videos on this channel every week so today we'll be making this ball dress though i have cut the bodies i have a video on how to do that on this channel so i'll be showing you how to couple the bodies and how to make the roses okay so you can make them in different colors like you can see on the screen okay so i made white because i made it for a little bride and it paid a lot so this style is very good so make sure you watch to the end and it is fun making this style so now let's get started so these are the fabrics i'll be needing for the style okay so you need organza fabric organza so about five to six years depending on how full you want it to be so this is it then satin and my lining Okay, so that is it. So for my organza, I'll be cutting it into straps, into strips, okay? So what I'll do is measure 7 inches. So I'll just measure 7 inches. And I'll cut. So that's how I'll cut until I finish cutting out everything, okay? So 7 inches is what I'll be using. So this is how I cut it, just cut it open a little bit then I tear, okay, so it's just easier this way. So I'll just do this until I finish cutting all the six yards. So this is it. So by the time I'm done cutting all the six yards, I would fold it, then I would weave the edge like so so just use overlocking machine or weaving machine to weave it so i'll do that to all of them i'll just weave everything so that is it and we'll have our strap our straps for the roses so here is the bodies okay i've cut it and then i'm going to stitch the neckline by half inch that is turning with the lining so that is it so this is the lining so this is the lining so i will be sewing the main fabric today lining so that is how we sew this one the main fabric to the lining for the front okay then i will sew the neckline and the armhole so just the neckline by half inch okay and the arm hole that is just where i'll be sewing for now i won't sew the shoulder at all for now so i'll do same for the back so i'll take the lining and sew it to the main fabric so i'll sew the neckline the arm hole and the zipper area okay that is where i'll be fixing the zipper so that is it the arm hole then the zipper side so i'll go ahead and do just that so i've sewn the lining to it and uh, i'll give it i'll notch it that is you make sure you notch your neckline okay i'm careful not to notch on your seam so after notching now i would turn the front part that is the front body so i'll turn it leaving the back the way it is for now so i'll just turn the front part to the right side then i would give it a good press to smoothen it out okay so i'll press it down so just give it a good press so that it can be smooth so now i have it here i want to stitch the shoulder so that i will have in seam finishing 
So now I'll take the back panel and I will insert the front into it shoulder to shoulder. And while you are doing this, make sure the lining fabric is facing the lining fabric. That is, if the back bodice is facing up, if the lining part is facing up, then the front bodice, your lining should also be facing up the way the back is. So that when you insert it, the lining part will be touching the lining parts and the main fabric will be touching the main fabric. Just like this, okay? So now I would insert it. So just place it. So that is my right side as in the main fabric. Then this top is the lining. So it will be touching this upper side. So I'll just place it in like so. So now I'll place it in and fix the shoulders together. So shoulder to shoulder. And I'll make sure that they are aligning. Okay, so just fix it to align. You can see what I'm doing. Okay. So I'll hold it down with pin before going to stitch it. I'll just hold it down with my pin. And I'll do same to the other side. I'll just insert this one. Then I would also hold it with my pin. I'm just making sure that they are aligning. So I have it there. So I've held it down with pin and I'll stitch it like this. And I'll do the same to the other side. And after stitching, I'll turn it. So I'm done stitching and I'm turning it. You can see what I have here. So I've sewn the shoulder and the seams are inside. And we have a network here. So I would give it a good press. Then close the sides. So I have it here. Now I'll stitch the sides and this is how to do it. So you take the main fabric and place it together, main fabric to main fabric like so, and the lining to lining and the right side facing each other so that the, the wrong side will be out like this and you stitch. So I'll do same to this other side, main fabric to main fabric, lining to lining, and right side facing. Then I would stitch, okay? So I have stitched it. I've stitched it and see what we have here. So you can see the seam inside. Okay, and I've notched it at that point. So I'll open it up now, like so, and place them together like this. Then I would iron it down, okay? So I'll just give it a good press. So give it a good press. So just making sure that everything is smooth. So that I can have a neat bodice and here it is okay here is my bodice so I'll just measure the waistline so that that will help me cut the lining and the damp part that is the lining for the damp part and also the main fabric for making the damp part so I'm just measuring it so that I'll know and I have it there okay so i'll go ahead and cut the lining okay but before then i want to make some pleats at the waist area so these are my strips you can see how they are i've weaved them remember how i told you to do this after cutting seven inches you fold and you weave so i have them there so i want to just pleat 
you know on the waistline so this is what i'm doing just placing one on each other so after cutting my seven inches there's you know the, the remaining one was not up to seven inches and that is the short one you can see there so i'm just placing it together and i'm stitching and while i'm stitching i'm making my pleats so i'm just pleating it no measurements at all just you know random pleating just to have a kind of pleats at that waist area and you see what we have there so you can see it okay i'm going to cut out the excess now so just cut out the excess strips and that is it so i also want to add a band to the waist area that is the band there too so i'll just pick up one of the stripes and then fold it then i'll make a band at the waist there okay so that is just it for now the band will be about two inches okay high so i have my strip here i'll fold it into two so by the time i fold it it's about two inches then i'll just attach it there So I'm just sewing down the band. So I'll just cut out the excess and this is what it looks like. So you can see it. Okay, so this is it. So now I'll proceed to making the down part which is a spiral rose but before then i'll cut the lining and what this plating i made i made it on only the main fabric i didn't include the lining parts okay so now i'll cut the lining for the skirt parts now after cutting it i'll attach it to the lining of the bodies so i've measured my waist line i measured my waist area so that was what i'll be using to cut my flay I cut a 180 degree flay. So I've taught you how to do that. So this is my 180 degree flay for my lining. So I will now attach it to the lining part of my body. So you can see I didn't stitch the pleats to it. So I'll just get the midpoint of my flay and I'll notch it. And also get the midpoint of the bodice and notch it too so after notching like so i'll then stitch together so that the lining will be separate from the main bodies okay so i'll just go ahead and stitch it in so the other side is the right side so right side facing each other then i will stitch so I'm just holding it down with pin at the midpoint there. Then also at the beginning there, I'll just place it together like so. Then I would stitch. Okay. So I've stitched my lining to the lining, and you can see what I have here. Okay, this is it. And on the other side, you can see how neat it is. So this is it for the lining part. Now we would move on to making our spiral roses. So for my spiral roses, I just have this satin. Though it's rumpled, but I'll use it like that. So this is just the mirror satin. Okay, why the one I use for the bodies is a doll face satin. They are all bridal satin, but just that one is shining and the other one is doll face. So now I would the length of the the, the the satin is you know the what i have there is the total length of the dress minus the top so that's what i have there so now the the wideness that is how long it is is two times the waist and i've hemmed it down okay so i just hemmed it down part now i will start making my spirals so i'm taking one inch from this side and that is my zipper allowance because the zipper will also get to the damp part that is to the skirt 
apart three inches from the top there so i'm just marking zipper allowance okay and i also mark it on this other side just one inch zipper allowance then i have it here like i said this strip is two times the waist so i'm going to make my spiral that is just draw circles okay and just keep drawing circles like this you can see what i'm doing so it's just like a spiral in a spiral way so the distance between one circle and the other should be like half inch but i'm just drawing any just drawing it you know it's just a guide to where we'll make the roses so the line you're making would be a guide for you to follow so i just made the circles but when you are sewing the distance between one orgaza should be like half inch okay so everywhere you have space you're going to fill it up i'm just drawing the circles so that that will be a guide for me when i'm sewing the orgaza to form my roses okay so i have it here so i hope you can see this the light is very bright but this is what i have okay just round just circles circles and that is how i would sew the roses just following the circle okay not really sewing on it but following it so that will be a guide so I'll take the organza strip one after the other okay and start sewing so i'll show you how to do that so i'm leaving the two last ones that is the, the, the first and the last one because I'll, at, uh, later on i'll be making the back one so i'll start from any one any of the circles like i'll just start from this one so this is what we want to achieve so i've done one okay so i want to show you how I did it. Now you take your organza as you have folded and weaved it. So at this weave edge, this is how I fold it down. I just bend it down. Then I'll place it at the center of one spiral. You know, I have them in set. So I've, I've done one. I'm, I've moved to the next one now. So just place it at the center like this. Then you start stitching. So you stitch round and round, and that is why I drew this, the mark. That's why I made the mark to guide me, okay? So it's not really, I might not be really sewing at the circles because I made it so bold. Because the distance you're supposed to give is like about half inch. So, but the mark is just to guide me, okay? So I'll be going round and round it. So this is actually not difficult, but it requires patience, so you have to be patient, okay, because you keep turning your fabric like you can see me doing. You know, you're sewing, you'll be sewing it round. You'll be sewing round. It's not a straight sewing. So you have to keep turning the fabric and keep sewing round and round. So just follow what I'll be doing, okay? So by the time you just sew a little, you turn. So you can see this. You just turn the fabric. So you just keep turning it and be following the mark. So that is the essence of the circles, the mark, okay, I made. So it's a gradual process. It's not something you rush. You have to take it gradually, okay? So you just sew and you turn. So the thing there is that it's quite tricky. At the beginning okay at this beginning it's quite tricky but you just take it cool and by the time you have started sewing it and the petals have started forming you see that it's quite easy okay so at this initial time we want to just achieve that center rose you know how rose looks at the center at the middle so that is what I'm trying to form here so I'll keep sewing it and until I have gotten what I want. And at this stage, it will be standing. Okay, so you just see it standing. 
So by the time I've gotten what I want or the layers I want, that is how many of the organs that are standing I want, I will start pleating it down. So the pleating will enable it to lie flat and you know, start opening up. So you see that. So I'll just continue turning it and continue stitching round and round like so. Sorry, the camera lights is really bright. I didn't realize that on time. So, and the fabric is white also. So it's, it's just showing a little, you know, the, the, the brightness is covering it up somehow, but I just pray you understand it as you watch. So it's just a matter of turning your fabric around and you keep sewing. Okay. You can see it's forming already. You can see what I have there. So you can see I've gotten the inner rows. Okay, so I'll start pleating it now so that it will start lying flat and also start opening up. So you watch how I will do it. So this is it. You can see I'm pleating now. So now as I stitch, I'll pleat. And you can see it has started opening up. Okay, you can see it. So as you stitch, you pleat and you keep turning the fabric. Just following the circle. And the distance between one petal and the other should be about half inch okay so you can see how i'm pushing it with my other hand and pleating it with the other like so so sorry about the faintness of the video please just understand it the way i'm explaining it So it's just a matter of adjusting. If you decide to practice this, you understand it better. Because as you're sewing it, you're getting the idea. Okay? As you're doing it, you'll be getting the idea. So I'll just keep sewing round and pleating as I sew. Okay? So you can see what I have here. And by the time you have gotten to the end of one strip of organza, this is how you do it. You just fold the edge. Okay, because you don't want it showing out like that. So you have to fold it. Then you pick another strip of organza and you join it there and continue. So you also have to fold this edge too to meet the other um, edge that you weaved. So you fold this one also. Then you now take this one and join it. So that is how you continue when one has gotten, that is when you are about to finish one. So I'm just pushing this side because I want this side to be, you know, um, a bit covered. So that's I'm pushing this other one in. So this is how you continue when one is about to finish. You pick another one and you join it and you continue stitching. Okay? So you just continue like that. So you keep going on and on and on. When one is about to finish, then you have about three inches left. You pick another one. And you fold it the way I just showed you. And you continue. So you just continue going round and round and round. Until you have finished one batch of the spira. Then when you're done with one batch, you move to the next one. Just like I showed. Okay. So that is how I am doing it. So you can see it. And as I do this, I'll be pleating it also. You can see the space I'm giving between one. 
so now that it's lying flat so it will cover it up so now I'm done making three so I started from this is the first one the second and the third one so I gave a little gap that is I didn't start from the beginning like so you can see because I want to stitch this side this will be the back so I'll take three inches from the waist you know the zipper will get to that part so three inches from the waist then I'll close it up down like so okay with a one inch zipper allowance so the reason for this is because I want to also have the rows at the back okay so I don't want to just sew it up there so by the time I finish sewing what I mean and by the time I just finish sewing it I'll now create another rose at the back here okay so when I just sew up that place now, I'll still draw my circles and make another rose. Then I'll close up all these spaces that I have. Anywhere there is space, I'll just fill it up because I want it full. I don't want any space showing. Okay, so that is what I'll do. So now you'll be wondering how this will pass through the sewing machine. This is how I'm doing it. Just gradually pushing it through as I sew. I just push it through the machine. So it's I decided to use the other machine instead of that, instead of the industrial machine, because this one goes gradually. You understand? I'm not sewing something straight. So that's why I decided to use this machine. It's better. So I can just take it gradually. So now I want to just fill up the spaces that are left. So I'm done with that particular strip and I'm taking another one to add to it and continue. So this is just what I will do until I have filled up any space that is left. Okay, so that is just how to go about it. Just continue adding and adding and adding until everything is covered up. Okay, so that is just it. So you can see how I'm doing it. So now I have everything covered up. Okay, so you can see it. And this is the other side. Okay, so you can see what I have here. Then I just closed it up. That is, I stitched a little bit at the top, at this part, so you can see it, to reduce the wideness at the waist. So I didn't touch the damp part, just this upside. Okay, just to reduce the wideness at the waist here. Okay, that is it. I just sewed it in like with about four inches. You can see it just to reduce this wideness. But at the damp part, we need the wideness. So I want to join it to the bodice now. So just the way we we'll join the top to the bodice. That's how we we'll do that. So I'll fix the lining also. So now I'll just join it. So what I'll do is to fold it to get the midpoints. So just want to get the midpoint there and this is it so i would notch it so i'll notch the midpoint that is at the front then i'll join it to the bodies to the upper part okay so i would also notch the upper part just fold it and find the midpoint at the front there and i would notch it too so now I'll join it. So just the normal way we we'll join the top to, to the down part. So what I'll do, I'll pin it at this midpoint. Then I'll pin it all around too. So it helps when you just pin it down so that when you start sewing, you just follow the pin and you sew all around so I'll pin it here too then I'll just pin it all around and as I do that I make sure the roses are out of the way okay this is how I'll go around just stitch it so now I'm stitching it and as I'm stitching I'm making sure that the roses are out of the way I'm pushing them in so that I don't stitch on it okay 
so this is it just pushing them in so now i'm done stitching i'll cut my thread and we have it here okay so this is it so this is what we have here and this is beautiful sorry the light is just too bright i just realized that so it's from the setting of the camera so but i believe you can see what we have here okay this is the back and you can see how covered it is okay so now i would fix the zipper so i'll fix the zipper and after that i would embellish the neckline okay so i would embellish the neckline so for your embellishment you can use whatever you like you can use lace trimming like you can see here so you can just use lace trimming to embellish okay but i decided to use stones so i decided to use stones so just want to place them on the dress to see how it will look on the dress so i have them here and this is beautiful it is beautiful so i'll go with the stones okay so to achieve the though it is full but to make it stand i would add nets i'll add hard nets under so i'll just gather the nets and stitch it to the lining okay so i'll just stitch it to the line in the normal way we add net to achieve fullness okay it is full yes but to make it stand okay so so that when it is worn it will just stand on the body okay so that is it so i'll be adding the net so i'll fix the net and have it there okay so see the inner part of the dress so now i would embellish the neckline using the stones okay so I'll be using beading needle to do this. So I'll be using beading needle. It's just like the regular needle, but this one is tiny. So it can pass through the stones. So I'll just stitch it to the dress, to the neckline, one by one. Okay? So that is it. And you can see what I have here. So I stitched at the upper part and I gave about two inches space and I stitched again. Then I filled it up. So this is it. So this is just beautiful. So this is the final outcome of the dress. So you can make this in other colors like pink and you know some other colors. So I used white because I'm making this for a little bride and it pays a lot. So it's very nice. You can try it. So don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you haven't subscribed. I have many other ball dress styles I'll be uploading on this channel. So subscribe and turn on the notification bell so that you don't miss out on those videos. Bye.